Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. So glad to have you here as we are uh, day two of the year. I hope hopefully yesterday was great. Maybe you're able to, to relax a little bit, enjoy that first day of the year. And now for, I know a lot of people, it's it's back to uh, back to work. Maybe if you're a teacher and uh, students, you got another week here, but we're, we're getting back into the swing of things. And uh, we're continuing our study through the book of John. And uh, we're uh, going to pick up the account here. Um, now, interesting thing about John. So John was written, the last of the Gospels that were written. So he was familiar with, with Matthew and Luke and Mark in those Gospels. So John doesn't spend any time on Jesus' birth. Mary, Joseph, no shepherds, no wise men, no story of Jesus going to the temple uh, when he was 12. All of those things, Matthew, Luke, they, they covered those things. So he, he didn't need to recover them. So he jumps right into... Um, the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. He jumps right to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is out telling everyone, prepare the way for the coming of God. Prepare the way for the Messiah. And John the Baptist's question, like, are you the Messiah? He's like, no, I am not the Messiah. He's being very clear there. I'm not the Messiah, but the Messiah is coming. Uh, John is attracting huge crowds. He's attracting his own followers. He's got disciples. As, as a as a leader, as a prophet, he has a group of, of young men around him that are, are assisting him, that are helping him, that are learning from him. And we're going to be introduced to a couple of those here today because they become Jesus' first disciples. And uh, as I was reading, we're not going to read through the whole passage here. Um, if we're, it's just a lot of content here. We're, going to read, we're looking here at verses 19 through 51, but the part that really jumped out at me today is the call of these first disciples and, and how Jesus called them. What were his instructions? What, what did he say? So let's read it here. Let's pick it up in verse 35. It says, The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God, uh, which takes away... Uh, look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. Te they replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him for the rest of the day. So these, these first two disciples, they came up, they were John's disciples. John's like, his whole ministry is around follow the one. The, the Messiah is coming. When John points them out, they immediately <laughs> go to Jesus. And Jesus' first instructions were, come and see. Come and see. You know, we're most familiar with Jesus' instructions to uh, Peter, and James, and John, uh, Andrew, at the, the fishermen. Come and follow me. But this very first command was, come and see. That's a pretty low level of commitment, right? I mean, to come and follow me, that means that you're, you're doing something active. You're leaving something and doing something else, which is what the fishermen were doing. But in this scene, he says, just come and check it out. Come and see with your own eyes what's taking place here. Come and have an encounter, an experience. From there, though, it continued. It says, Andrew, uh, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men. So Andrew, who later was asked to come and follow me, his first instructions were, come and follow us, come and see. So Andrew, one of these men who heard that what Jesus said, followed, then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah. So not only has, has John the Baptist said, hey, this is the Messiah, Andrew has now spent some time with Jesus, watching, observing, and now he's convinced. So what does Andrew do? He goes and tells his brother Simon, this is the guy. This is the Messiah. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is the one we've been praying for. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, uh, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come, follow me. Philip was from the Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. So probably some familiarity. They're from the same area. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, explained Nathanael, can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. 
Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Before Philip found you. Then Nathanael explained, Rabbi, you are the son of God, king of Israel. Jesus asked him, do you believe this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth. You will see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the son of man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Well, that's, that's some powerful insight in this very first encounter. The son of man, the one who is the stairway, the bridge, the gap, the connection between heaven and earth. But all this starts with that simple phrase, come and see. You know, when I think about evangelism, sharing our faith, I think so often we are so busy to tell people what has taken place, to tell people that we forget to invite them to come and see. Come and see what God is doing. Come and experience, come and watch. Come and be part of our, part of our community. Open up the doors, walk through the doors of the church and experience what's happening here each and every weekend. And inviting people into your home and seeing how you interact. That so many people, and I would say the vast majority of people, need to see something before they believe it. They need to have an experience, an encounter with Jesus. So, so what does that mean? How does that happen? It happens lots of different ways. But most often, it's by a follower of Christ inviting someone to just be part of their life. Come and see what's happening. And then eventually, the commitment does have to have to step up. Eventually, there has to be a decision to follow. You can't just be in, in observation mode forever. At some point, they had to wrestle with what they were seeing. Is this true or is this not true? Andrew was pretty quick here. He spent about 24 hours with Jesus and realized this is the one. This is the one we've been waiting for. And I love his response. His immediate response is, go and tell other people. Go and tell, his, go and tell Peter. Let him know what he's seen. It's what John has pointed out. It's what I've seen with my own eyes. You have to experience, you have to have an encounter with Jesus like I have had because it changes everything. Having an encounter with Jesus. From the very first disciples until now, people have been having encounters with Christ. Whether it's in community of Christians or whether God has, has revealed himself to them in, in, in other ways. And maybe in the lowest of times, sometimes it's in the best of times. Uh, but God wants to have an encounter with us each and every day. Come and see. And that's kind of the expectation we have every morning. Every day morning here on the Daily Race. Hey, let's, let's come and see. Let's come to God's word together and see what he might show us today. And then we have to make a decision. Now that we've seen it, now that we've, we've observed it, do I believe it and am I going to do it? Am I going to follow it? That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where it goes from, from head knowledge to heart knowledge. And that's where transformation starts to take place. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much just for, for your word, that you want to have an encounter with us each and every day, that you love us, uh, that you desire to be in a relationship with us, uh, that you are willing to show us. God, it's not just blind faith. You've given us your word. And you've recorded these accounts. You've preserved it. You've worked in our lives, in other people's lives. You've given us evidence, things that point people towards you. We have the testimony of, of your word. We have the testimony of other people, God. Thank you. Thank you for that. And God, as we step into today, we are choosing to follow. Not just to, to see, but to see, to observe, to believe, and to put into practice. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.